Well hello everybody it's Chaz Large here with another fix it video for you and on the bench today we've got a great piece of equipment uh, this is a stack system or a uh, modular system compact system whatever you want to call it uh, it consists of a main amplifier twin cassette deck and CD player as the main unit uh, no sorry not uh, tuner as the main unit and then we've got a CD player on top of that and on top of that we've got a turntable and the customer is saying to us it's got multiple faults uh, tape deck is problematic the CD player is uh, not working and the turntable uh, it also isn't working correctly so uh, we've got a fair bit of work to do on this one to get this one up and running and uh, hopefully we can uh, get it sorted fairly quickly because uh, it's coming up to Christmas and I'm pretty sure that uh, the customer would like to have this back uh, for a Christmas party or just having some uh, decent music in the background whilst you're enjoying your Christmas lunch whatever anyway uh, we will get uh, to work on this I'll probably do it in different stages because it's taking up as you can see quite a lot of the bench space um, so I will probably uh, work on the bottom unit first move these are all disconnected anyway um, uh, so I'll take these two off and then we'll have a look at the cassette deck get that working uh, get make sure the amplifiers are working and then we can move on to uh, the CD player as a separate entity and the turntable as a separate entity right here we are we've uh, separated this uh, main mechanism from the um, the other two units uh, so we've got uh, down below we've got um, the main amplifier uh, panel with a graphic equalizer uh, then we've got the two tape decks and at the top we've got the tuner so let's uh, plug it in we've connected up some speakers down below uh, let's just see uh, what happens when we turn it on so power light comes on illuminated volume control no less uh, tuner is tuned into that so let's select tuner turn the volume up <coughs> not particularly great FM reception but uh, let's stop it there That, will, that should give us a better reception. Just about got a stereo light there now. Seated on a plush sofa at the back of the room. Yeah. Okay, so I think we can safely say that the tuner is working. That's good. Right, let's have a look at the cassette decks right well they are um, well what can we say let's have a little look um with the top down camera and bring that into view and we can see in that cassette deck that has not been used for many a year that is absolutely ch choked up with dust now it may be that that's the deck that's not working that one looks like it's had a bit more use Let's see if we can focus in on that. So that deck definitely there looks like that's had a bit more use than that deck there. It's definitely, that's a playback only deck by the look of it because there's no raised head in there. Uh, so that's a record and playback deck which is probably why that one has been used more for recording purposes so uh, let's pop a test tape in there this is just a purely test tone uh, and see what it does interesting it's just going hissy crackly let's try it again hmm. right so before we try the other deck let's give the other deck a bit of a clean off Okay, 
So let's give that deck a try. Not a lot better. Not a hissy sort of almost like radio static breaking through. Let's just go back to this one. Yeah. And give that a bit of a clean off with my brush first. Not that it's made a lot of difference, but right. Briefly looking through the um, uh, the grills there, it looks like there's a fair amount of dust inside um, those uh, the mechanism so uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, take it apart give it a clean uh, and uh, see what we can do Right, well, as you can see, uh, this mechanism is very, very dusty indeed. Very dusty indeed. And really and truly, before I work on that, I really would like to uh, give it a clean off. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, take it outside and give it a clean. Right, it's giving it a bit more of a clean up. Uh, we can actually see where we are inside the mechanism now and uh, we can see uh, down in here that it's uh, a lot lot cleaner than it was before moving on right i think uh first thing we need to do is just give these uh heads a little bit of a clean we'll just get a little bit of uh, isopropyl as well. You can rotate that from the inside to give that a clean. Same with that one. So they should be a lot a lot lot better than they were. Let's uh Fluttering going on there. Now the thing is with this one, it's only got one motor that's driving both decks. And uh, 
from that same motor is two drive belts so um, it might be worth actually stripping down the mechanisms to uh, to see if we can make the uh, the decks run a little bit smoother not sure whether it's actually worth and that deck is certainly sounding better than this other one in terms of level I suppose I could put the screen maybe just this ah, there's a little switch here which is part and parcel of this switch here runs the motor and that's okay be careful here because the mains is close by that's This one we've got. Type A B switch there, I think. Let's record or not. So I wonder if it's sometimes the um, tape type switches. problems yeah it's that tape tight switch so I think that's the next item on the agenda is to give those a bit of a clean off Okay, well I've turned the mechanism on its side to show you where these switches are at the top of the deck here um, you've got several switches one here um, one down the far end and one on the other deck as well and these are the switches that uh, determine what uh, type of tape uh, type 1 type 2 uh, is put into it and if those switches are noisy then uh, what can happen is that the um, the playback circuitry doesn't know whether it's type 1, type 2 and keeps trying to uh, switch between the two as it were and consequently it's uh, noisy and uh, unfortunately because the switches uh, I'm just going to switch it off um, because these switches are in the front uh, inside the mechanism here they're, they're like encapsulated uh, you can't really get in there um, they're just in here that um, you can't actually get in there to clean them so really and truly the only way I'm going to do this is to dismantle this whole front mechanism uh, take the whole front chassis out of this um, and hopefully uh, we should be able to get better access to the cassette decks there because we can't seem to get access to them um, where they are at the moment you know, uh, being a what they call a MIDI system rather than a true stack system these um, bits here are s not separate entities they are um, just one big panel um, and so consequently what we need to do is to see if we can take that panel out uh, and in doing so we'd have to take out the connections from it now there looks to be like a fair 
bit of leeway in terms of the um, the wiring um, in there to be able to uh, get that front panel off but only time will tell um, hmm I'm wondering whether looking at the way that this thing is the, the, uh, not got a manual for one of this so I haven't got the uh, dismantling instructions but if we have a look down here we can see that the main circuit boards are mounted on a bracket and that bracket is screwed in from underneath so I'm wondering if we can dismantle all the metalwork around this rather than having to try and take this out of the metalwork so I think that's the way I'm going to try and uh, see if that will work let's pop that back up there out of the way so we can't we're not getting in the way and I have to sit on my chair because my bad back just will not allow me to stand up any, anymore years ago hours spent at the bench uh, stood up doing repairs was fine nowadays um, unfortunately the answer is no oh having seen those brackets and then looking down here um, um, not going to be quite so easy not going to be quite so easy after all so I think the first thing we'll do is we'll take the back panel off here um, and then uh, we can see um, on the back panel there's lots of screws holding everything in so that will give us a bit more access we may be able to just reach in there and actually take the cassettes off the front panel without having to take all that out those brackets down below are only on one side so I can't really undo and slide the whole lot out anyway let's uh, see what we can do right got a different bit and we should be able to whiz through this so uh, while I'm doing this I'll put this on fast forward nice if this power part had been pluggable. Where's that? But look, I have to fiddle around with the. Can all be in there? Right. Deck mechanism. One, two. Four screws and a cable tie. See, there's one screw there, one screw there, that one and that one, an equivalent set of screws down the other end, which I can't get the camera to, so uh, you'll just have to take my word for it. Uh, yeah, there's one screw down here as well in the middle, so and then there's a multitude of little wires. Ah, that's interesting. Let's see. Push that out, guys. Laying it down. Okay. Yeah. 
them up. We'll find it. And that one's dropped down as well. Again. Not sure that one's actually holding the mechanism in place. So the mechanism is now loose. I think we're going to have to release these cable ties. We can always put them back afterwards. door spring just flipped off of there oh, that's all right I think yeah. they both have and there is our mechanism out so these are the two screws in there which this screw are which is more magnetic than the other one should be able to pick them up. Okay. So, really and truly, all we're interested in, just on here. Are these little leaf switches here. That's the record prevention, that's the tape type switch on both of those. As you can see there. So we shall get a cleaning stick. And before we put anything in there we'll just give it a rub over. There's a lot of work for what looks to be like a little job. I'll just give it a little spray of isopropyl. Just give it a little 
clean and there with a cleaning bud. Same on this one. So give the well-worn heads a good polish over. Let's see if we can. Get rid of some of the oxide. I did use this little this old chamois cleaner earlier on. Let's see if we can do that a bit better by clean. Now we can really get at the mechanism. It feels squeaky clean. Now you can see it's a single motor driving the two halves of the deck. JVC mechanism. I'm thinking I might just, if I can, take the capstans out. The belts actually feel quite good, quite springy. No slacking them. So I think I might just temporarily take those off and then drop the um, capstans out. We can move this little split washer here. Little split washer on the bottom end of the caps in there. Come on, focus. Yeah. So, as it's a plastic split washer. It, should just come if I pop off and drop down. Where does it drop to? There it is. Get the fine tweezers in there. We should be able to retrieve it. Or at least knock it into my hand. Yeah, probably knock it into my hand would be better. It's just sitting on one of the keys. There it is. So, here's the capstan removed. Let's give that a bit of a. Oh, I feel it's as dry as a bone. So, what we do there. Get a little bit of liquid molly. You can use this stick that she's nearly had it. Just put a little bit on the stick, and then a little bit on the bottom of the capstan. Just take it to there. So you're just going to put a little bit on the bottom of the capstan and up a little bit. So when that goes back in, that now spins much better. 
put that to one side for a minute we can uh, get the drive belt back on hopefully it hasn't come off the main motor pulley which it hasn't hold it in place get that little split washer that back on the capstan. So that's one done. And the other one, take the drive belt off, keeping it in tension, just bring it back over the motor just to hold it there. Well, that drive belt actually looks a bit elastic. I think I might change that one. Again, get hold of the little split washer. Can't quite get hold of it this time. Just the pliers are slipping. Come mm. on, you little devil. Pull the capstan down from the rear. There we go. Get hold of it. Put it off. Take that capstan out. And again, get our finger cloth. Eyes a bone. A little bit of molly coat on the bottom round. A little wash on this one as well. If you didn't see on the other one, it's probably stuck down the bottom, not to worry. Just push that down there and put the molly coat on there. And pull that back into Spindle to give it a spin nicely, it spins nicely. Put the split washer back on, push it down to the clips, and it's done. Yeah, now this belt, is thankfully on the top of the pulley. As you can see, it's got a bit elastic. Well, normally they would just spring back, but this has got like an elastic, so it's a pretty much had it that belt. Let's see if we can find a new belt. So there we have a new belt um, and it's much more springy so it's not rubbery so it's like it's acting like an old rubber band. So to get this in here we have to feed it in this part of the mechanism and then hook it around the pulley which you can't see in there and I can't get the camera in there but uh, rest assured it is in there. So I've got a set of tools with a little hook on the end. So I can put this through here hook the 
the belt onto the end of it, keeping the belt under tension and drop it over the pulley. So, take the hook out, and then hook it round there, like so. And we put the uh, idler belts back, which seem to be in quite good nick. I'll we'll leave them as they were. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So you don't need to change an idler belt if it still feels okay. So that's all the belts sorted. One belt changed. Because it's fixed. Now then. The answer is, and the, the question is rather, brush. That uh, pinch roller does seem to be rather on the verge of cracking up. Well, at the moment I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to bother changing that, but I do need to put the mechanism back in order to test it. Now I've got to do is remount this and get the eject door springs in the right place because they have both unsprung themselves. Twisty, twisty, twisty. And I could have released that other. against it. screws are the same length, same tight, same length. Let's push that back a little bit. Threaded screw which we kept separate that goes down here.
Right, here we go for the next test. Put the test tape in. And it plays that way. Helps to be powered on. get any copyright hits because this is all uh, YouTube music I've recorded it onto a cassette so I can test it and happily play it back without any worries about uh, you know, copyright hits Should be able to get something on FM. No entertainment, I'm not understanding why. And, uh, so rewind that one back to the beginning. For this we don't have a tape counter, so we'll just have to 
let it run for a couple of minutes and come back past the leader. Recording okay, let's see what the dubbing is going to be like. So, high speed dubbing is there, and I think we've got oh, it's surround sound. There, we don't want that. Do we? So, high speed dubbing. So, presumably, when we press record and <laughs> Concern. This main amplifier part is now fixed. Tape deck service. That was the easy bit. Uh, we've now got the uh, CD player and the record deck to sort out as well. So we'll come back once I've reassembled this and uh, got start working on the uh, cassette on the uh, CD player. Right. Well, the next item on here is going to be the CD player. So uh, we can see that here. Um, we've got the CD player. Let's. Uh, I've connected it all up. Power on for the first time, and the CD player powers up. The lights come on, and it's flashing disc. And oh, it ain't opening. I bet I know what that is. I bet that's a drive belt. So uh, let's uh, power it off. And for ease of access, let's unplug it. In fact, we could in fact get rid of the main unit. We don't really need that until such time as we're testing it out. Okay, so chances are this is a, a simple drive belt and cleanup exercise because one of the main reasons for CD players stopping after a number of years is that the optics pick up dust. If you've opened a a tray mount CD player or disk drive on a computer you will almost certainly see a little swirl of dust because static electricity is generated when the disk spins and that causes the uh, dust to be sucked in We shouldn't. Top off. Right. Interesting. For a JVC machine, it's got Hitachi and Sony chips in, and always a Mitsubishi chip there as well. So, let's have a look at the tray mechanism. Looks a fairly standard um, mechanism. Doesn't that actually look too dusty. Looks very clean to be honest. Maybe because that's a bit that sits on the top and doesn't collect the dust. So I 
don't think it's dry. It's a belt. I think it's mainly possibly just a bit of lack of lubrication on there. Yeah, where the lubricant is. Let's bring that camera into play. So you've got uh, a lever that when you press, see that white lever moves, albeit very s stiffly. I think we could get away with a quick bit of lubrication on that. The old molly coat comes in again. See, we have actually got a dry belt issue as well. I think we've just been lucky. Um, those times, if you look at that dry belt there, you can see. Oh, that, that shouldn't be like that. In fact, I think somebody's replaced that, and it's not the right size dry belt. You look at the way it wobbles. Not so good. Right. Now if I remember this mechanism correctly, if we power it off and undo these two screws here, which are basically end stops for the movement of the, of the tray, that tray will come out. Yeah. And then we can remove that belt, which is definitely not the right size for that pulley. So let's see if we can find a suitable belt. Which I think, well, like it's even a JVC part. I seem to remember these mechanisms having this problem many times. I may be wrong, uh, yeah that's too big. It was a good try. It was a good try. So we're looking at a belt of what size? What size diameter? We're looking at a, uh, no. try the one that's bent roughly. Let's put it into this is the way I do it. I'm pretty sure this is the right way. You get it into near circular and then you measure the inside diameter, which is 25. Of course, that's got part numbers on, nothing to do with actual belt sizes. So I might have some belts like I used to buy from Simi. That's a cassette belt, 40 millimeters. That's too big. That's too big. Aha. Uh -huh. I may be lucky in that that's the right size. Let's have a look. No, that's 30. That's too big. That's too big. Cassette loading belts there. JVC belts. That's 34. No good. What's that one? Is that another one? Yeah, 30. Oh, we're going down to the depths of the belt box here. Sixty-six mil. They're much too big. So, tape belts. What size? That's thirty. Because that one's stretched. I think it might even be a twenty-five, a twenty mil belt. That's the right diameter, but it looks awfully thin. So we'll just keep going until we find something a little bit better. Yeah, they're all too big. Ah, what have we got here? 
Ooh, look at that, 25. Could we be in luck? That looks good, doesn't it? That looks a lot better than what was in there. Moving it backwards and forwards. So let's put those two screws back in. Where do we put them? I might put them over there. I have no idea, but I did. switch me to mind somewhere because that shouldn't be going back in on its own. Ah, oh, now she did say, the customer did say, um, the, the drawer, just remembered now, the drawer is a bit like Arkwright's till. Remember Arkwright's till from open all hours and still open all hours? Which sadly has just come to an end. You won't be seeing Granville anymore. Uh, so I'm guessing that that is the fault that she's actually complaining of. That it's doing an art right too. Yes, that's what she's talking about. Right, so what we've probably got then is a little leaf switch or maybe an optocoupler which is not being detected at the end of the travel as it moves in and out. Let's see, uh, anyway, we've got a dry belt. So, so far we've changed two dry belts, we'll put them over there. So, let's take the drawer out and pull the plug. So, can we take the deck out without having to take the front panel out? I think we can. Put that over there for now. now. How well does that mechanism lift up? Yeah. That, I think, is, that piece of plastic is broken off of there, look. You can see. One of the bits of plastic that hold it, hold the tray in place. Not to worry, um, let's take the tray off again. I thought we were going to be able to slide the tray and the mechanism out on mass. It would seem not. And we have to determine it's going to be, I would think, a switch or something on the underside of that that's determining whether it's in or out, and it's that that's the cause of the problem. I don't particularly want to go pulling loads of wires and plugs out. I can otherwise avoid it. I remember the black one. There was on those 
deck screws. There was one black one um, because it's got a shaft on it, so it goes in there. So the others are well. Let's put a B on there, then we'll know. That's where the black one went. Now, can that mechanism just clear that? Yes, it can. If you've never seen the underside of a fairly old CD player, this is what it looks like. So you've got a worm drive here which drives the uh, optical block up and down. You've got the turntable motor there and you've got that's the feed in and out motor. So that switch there I would guess, yeah, if we look at it, you can now see it two positions in and out and it could well be that that switch is just a bit on the dirty side and it looks like it should actually unclip let's see if we can lift this around and get to that bit without scratching the chassis let's put I'm going to scratch the plastic on the top there let's see if that will unclip that's one side unclipped let's clip back in again see if I can work three fingers Two to do the clips and one to pull the switch up. There's a clip on the side as well, I don't think so. Here it comes. Power pliers to gently ease it up. There it is. So there's our switch. So I would guess that we've got three wires, one of which is common, the other one which is the other two. So let's put this on continuity mode on my meter. And try clipping it to that one. making connection to either of them. Maybe this one is the common. connecting to there so perhaps that one's the common it may just be that the switch itself has gone faulty and is not making connection with this yellow wire that one makes that's the out it's there but it's intermittent so the common is this light orange oh, I realize now that you couldn't see what I was doing so what I was doing is testing continuity between these three pins and uh, when the switch is in the out position there um, these two make contact when it's in it should be these two making contact and it's only sporadic. Now I could try just squirting some 
uh, switch cleaning lubricant in there. But you do need to be a little bit careful with switch cleaning lubricant because sometimes it can cause malfunctions of the plastics. So just a tiny little squirt. And move the switch backwards and forwards a number of times. It depends on the type of switch that it should be making contact with. So let's try that's one way. And I think that's that's the dodgy end because that's only making brief connection right so I'm going to get a little bit closer because I've had to deal with these types of switches before maybe I can get a little bit more got a little bit more surface on and let's see if that will lubricate it. Yeah. I think we've been lucky. We can manage to get some of that switch cleaner in there and it's worked a treat. So put that switch back in there. Phew. Right, that's one bit of it done. Now we've got to look at this broken bit of plastic down here which is holding the tray in place. deck located. It just sits in little locating lugs. There it is. So that bit of plastic there is broken and then that bit there has broken off the top of it. So. Now I did glue it um, and I came back after a couple of hours and it was still very loose and I thought should I put some hot melt glue on this or not now I thought no actually it needs to be something a bit more solid than that so I mixed up some araldite uh, onto there so that is now uh, pretty much rock solid on there and uh, supported for the future and luckily I managed to get it so that there's no uh, glue gone into the slide area there where the uh, the actual um, tray goes in and out and so if we pop the tray back into it now um, very gently it's in that little slot there we push it through the gears and so it just 
runs into there and that's now in the right place so now we can put that there and put the two screws back into the tray uh, that act as stops crude but effective does the job basically stops the tray from shooting out a bit like Arkwright still as it was doing and hopefully with that uh, switch that we managed to um, fix over this side as well um, hopefully that will um, allow us to have a, a good working mechanism once again so let's uh, power it up the drawer should close as soon as we turn the power on which it does and clamps down let's try eject and the drawer opens and doesn't now shoot straight back in again once more yeah look at that hey eh? that's the kind of repair we like to see isn't it so now let's open it and see if it will take a disc I was going to put a little bit of Katie money on it it's not going to be playing back but at least the, the disc will uh, be tested so disc close and it spins and we get 44.46 on the um, display so now we can press play and it's playing track one which is great let's uh, skip to the next track two how many tracks are there on this at uh, 12 so let's just skip each track difficulty with track 7 there may be some fingerprints on the disc struggling a bit might be the lights lasers don't always like too much ambient light let's go straight to 12 really struggling to play track 12 let's take the disc out and have a look at the disc and no, no problems with the disc so I'm guessing that the uh, optical block may need a little bit of a clean now the optical block in these let's just uh, power it off for a minute because I think with this particular mechanism, if my memory serves me correctly, one of many that I've worked on, uh, we can actually just lift out the clamp, the disc clamp, by undoing one screw. Like so, and then with a pair of pliers, just grabbing hold of this spring. So what we'll do. No, they we're just going to compress the spring down this end and then take it out there we are and then there's a little clip and that will freeze up the clamp so there we have the optical block now with CD players quite often the optical uh, objective lens that on the top there gets um, dirty so we use one of these dry these swabs dry and we'll just give the optical block a dry over but what a lot of people don't realize with cd players is the optical block is a lot more complex than just a lens on the top of a laser because the lens itself is what's called the objective lens so it can move side to side and up and down for focusing and underneath that is a whole kit and caboodle of um, other lenses cylindrical lenses um, prisms and so on and dust and dirt can get in there 
And one of the little tricks you can do is if you've got some aero duster, which is you know um, basically an aerosol duster, is you can blow that dust away. Now the thing is you want to give it a very short, sharp little like that. No more than that because if you blow out too often, um, um, Bohr's law comes into effect. You're taking a pres pressured gas as you cool it, it will, uh, as you release the pressure, it will cool down. And if you cool down the optics too much, you can actually damage it. So just a little short burst. And if you can get to somewhere else under there, that can sometimes that blows the dust away from the bottom of the optics. Now you could in fact take it all apart, but then you run the risk of more damage. Oh, there's so much crud on this turntable. Let's get rid of that, shall we? While we're at it. Not makes a lot of difference because once it's clamped down, it's clamped down. But just do it. Hmm. Right. So having hopefully cleaned that, we can now put the clamp back. So the clamp on here. drops into there and pops there and held in by a little clip there and then one screw down this side to keep it in place now no guarantee that this is going to fix it but it's a possibility that it would a distinct possibility because it has done in the past so let's grab hold of the spring Stretch it out a little bit, get a screwdriver in it and pull it down whilst you manoeuvre the bottom of the spring. Over the hook. Of course, modern day CD players haven't got great big lumps of plastic and all that. Makes them so much more difficult to fix. But these good old hi-fi CD players. Yeah. Actually designed to be fixed. So let's plug her in again. Let's get my disc. this camera for a minute or two let's just focus that let's go and play track one's playing okay jump to track six halfway down the disc it's playing okay jump to track 12 which is not playing very well before oh look at that now that's what I call a fix was it was struggling to play track 12 before straight to it. Dirty optics. Brilliant. Oh, I love it. I just I love it when a plane comes together. And that's basically all it is, is that the optical block within the CD um, objective area can get dusty. And a short little burst of air blows that dust away. Um, and that's how it works. So that's the CD player fixed. Put Katie back in there. Thank you, Katie. I've got another. Well, let's just put the old compact disc digital audio thing on. And notice the way that in the plastic they've moulded it to look like uh, hexagonal screws. So it looks like it's thing, but it's just a bit of plastic. That just clips on the front, slightly under tension. Oh, 
close the drawer, open it again, close it again. Perfect. Right. We'll box that one up and we'll move on to the turntable next and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to get the turntable sorted just as quickly and the customer can have this back in time for Christmas. Sure, you don't need to see me put all the screws in. I'll cut back after I've uh, um, done that and got the rest of the system back in here. Now, I bet some of you were itching to say uh, to get onto the old comments and say he hasn't put the screws back in the deck. Well, you're absolutely right. I totally forgot. Just got the lid on. And I noticed the the, uh, the screws uh, there. So uh, that's that's the next screws. And remember, the black one goes here. And of course, uh, we need to take the um, tray out to get to the, some of those. So anyway, I'll uh, do this, put it all back together, and be back with the turntable soon. Right. Well, we're reassembled uh, with the CD player, and uh, I tried it with Katie Miller without any speakers. So uh, now let's put my uh, little test disc in, which has got tracks from the, the YouTube library, and see if it plays. Well, it's a CDR, and it's reading that. It says 27 tracks, which is correct. And let's go play with track one. Let's skip on a little bit. Now there were only 12 tracks on the Katie Miller uh, CD so let's skip this on as I said there's 26 so let's go uh, 10 that's playing okay 16 Just struggling a little bit with 24. Uh, it's because this is a, a CDR, which it may well have difficulties with, but it's still got there. 25 has got there. Twenty-six. Not bad for a 30-year-old piece of equipment, is it? Playing back a CDR recorded just today. It's hard to recorded I didn't I thought I had a copy of this but uh, there we are anyway so that's the CD playing okay let's take that out just to show you that is a, a test disc with uh, YouTube tracks just in case anyone wants to know very useful to have it's a test disc um, I've always had a test disc but uh, of course since uh, YouTube uh, videos you have to be careful about uh, copyright compliance right now the other thing that the customer said that they were having difficulty with uh, was the turntable. Now this could be a little bit more awkward to test because I haven't got any YouTube audio LPs or um, thingies so I'm going to put the headphones in. So that uh, when it starts to play I will be able to hear it but you won't. So we'll start off with a, a 45 CD of ABBA. Uh, take a chance on me, why not? Yeah, cool. Let's pop that in the middle and we'll set it to, uh, oh I've got disc size 33 and 17 and we'll lift up the thing and uh, we'll in at 45 so we'll go start oh yeah let's drop straight in so phono and I can hear Abba singing take a chance on me uh, hopefully uh, you won't be able to hear that uh, but not to worry definitely playing back 45 so we'll do stop and that uh, takes that back again and stops it so that turntable on 45s is working okay 
and we'll get out. How about uh, how about a trap from the ink spots on uh, an LP recorded in 1967? Well, that's when this is printed. So we'll try it on a 33 inch and 30 a 30 inch record, 33 and a third. Press start. That's a long intro. Oh, there we are. Yep. Oh, definitely um, the track. Whispering Grass. Why do you whisper green grass? I can't sing either. But that's definitely playing, so we can press stop. And I think the turntable was not a problem. I remember what they said about the turntable but there we are it seems to be working all right I think she said it wasn't it wasn't loading but maybe there was something a little bit jammed up in it that transportation has moved or perhaps you just brought it along I, I honestly can't remember what she said anyway suffice to say that uh, it looks like we've uh, completely fixed this uh, machine um, quite a nice little MIDI system let's just put the uh, cover on there shut that lid down um, everything's working okay CD wise amplifiers working okay tuners working okay tape decks working okay so uh, I think uh, we're we're pretty much done and uh, thanks very much for watching hope you've enjoyed uh, a little trip of nostalgia back to this MIDI system and I'll see you again on the next one bye for now